we all have a pretty good idea of what animals use toxins to defend themselves. Whether it's venomous snakes and spiders or poisonous frogs and pufferfish. But believe it or not, in the forests of the United States, a species of bird has developed an incredible ability to defend itself with a horrific skin-melting poison. And not only that, but this bird can do something no other species on the planet can. My mission today is to track down this bird and showcase these two bizarre behaviors right in front of the camera. This bird is actually incredibly common all around the country, but I've decided to search for it in the cottonwood forests of central New Mexico because of a very appropriate statue here that should give me a good look at the animal I'm going in to find. All right, we're here on a busy street in Albuquerque, and you might notice there's a gigantic kaiju-sized bird next to me. This is a massive metal sculpture of a nuthatch, the bird that we're after today. Although the ones we're looking for today are much smaller than this, and thank God or else we'd all be on the menu, we can still look at this statue and see some really cool features that give us some hints as to the lifestyle of this bird. If you look at that beak, you'll notice how it's shaped. Incredibly sharp and chisel-like, perfect for pecking through wood. And from that, we can tell this animal is an insectivore, targeting all the bugs that live in tree bark. Another aspect of its behavior is teased on this sculpture as well, but we're gonna wait to find a real one before talking about that. To find our target, we're heading to the Rio Grande Bosque, a forest that should be chock full of this species. But I'm not just looking for one of these birds. I have to find one in the specific set of circumstances where it would be using its poison, which is no easy task. So to help me conjure up as much luck as possible, I've got some tricks up my sleeve to attract as many birds as I can. So right now, I'm dressed as a frat boy, and the birds can sense that. They aren't gonna give me the time of day. They're wondering, is this guy gonna shock in a beer in here? No, what we have to do is transform our outfit with a few simple adjustments into something the birds will be a lot more comfortable with. By tucking in my shirt, adding some incredibly unnecessary outdoors gear, and hoisting up my shorts so high that I border on the edge of infertility, I now look exactly like a stereotypical birder, and the avians of this forest will be much more willing to reveal themselves. To finish the disguise, I just need to mimic some of their common behaviors to complete the illusion. Excuse me, excuse me, have you guys seen any warblers around here? Any warb- no? No warblers. Oh yeah, work it. Just like that. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> With such a flawless disguise, I knew that it was only inevitable that I'd find some birds. And although no poison wielding ones yet, I did come across the exact opposite. One that's immune to poison. All right, really, really great find. Up in that tree, we have a black-headed gross beak, one of the coolest birds in this forest. And you can just see the huge crushing beak on that bird. It can just crush right through nuts, other hard food materials. And actually, the French word gros beak uh, translates to large beak, which is very appropriate for this guy. Now, you may look at the colors of that bird, the black, the orange, the white, and think, man, it kind of looks like a monarch butterfly which is ironic because it's one of the only birds in the entire world that's immune to its poison. Because of a unique mutation in its DNA, the black-headed gross beak is immune to the deadly poison of monarch butterflies, which they've absorbed from their time eating poisonous milkweed as caterpillars. Because of this immunity, this bird follows these butterflies down to their winter roosting grounds in Mexico, where they gorge upon the poor little things, collectively eating around a million per year. Although a very cool bird, it's not what we're after. And to find prime nuthatch territory, we're gonna have to go deeper into the forest and search out the large cottonwood trees they like to forage in. The deeper into the forest we went, the more of their distinctive calls I heard, so I knew we were close. But we stumbled upon a harsh reminder of how fragile this ecosystem is. All right, this is just tragic to see. As you can see, all these trees have just been incinerated by a huge fire that has rolled in through this forest. And that's just one of many fires New Mexico sustained this summer. And sadly, this was an amazing habitat for so many animals, including nuthatches. But as you can see, it's all pretty much destroyed. Oh, look at that. There's a, there's a nice little QR code with an informational video. Let's check it out. Let's see what's up with it. Oh my God, who's... Who's that hottie on camera? My God. You know, as much as I try, I just can't get away from this guy. But uh, for real, this is a pretty funny video I made for the uh, fire safety out here. So if you want to check it out, feel free to do so. 
Luckily, the fire didn't burn down all the cottonwoods, and soon we were in the thick of nuthatch territory. But it's not enough to just see these birds. I need to find one of their poison zones, and shockingly, we actually found one. A nuthatch nest. That is incredible. That tree right there with the two broken off branches, right in there is a nuthatch nest. And the odds of us finding this are crazy. I would have been happy with just a nuthatch and talking about their poisonous defense. But right there is where they actually use it. I mean, what did I tell you? It's the, it's the birding gear. It's the exceptional luck I bring to the table. What an amazing find. And it's so special that we found this nest because not only can I talk about their poison defense, but I can showcase their special ability that no other bird can do. When birds are nesting, their chicks are extremely vulnerable to any predator that can reach them, specifically squirrels. Yes, squirrels eat baby birds and it's pretty disturbing. But since the nuthatch is too small to fend off these predators, it figured out another way to protect its babies. In a previous video, I highlighted the blister beetle, a species of beetle that leaks out the horrific poison cantharidin, which leaves agonizing blisters on anything it comes into contact with. But humans aren't the only animals aware of its effects, and the nuthatch has found a way to use the beetle's toxin for its own defense. It flies down and picks up a beetle, and with its proportionately long bill, it keeps the poison away from its body. Then the beetle has a really crappy day, as its body is grinded up against the edge of the nest hole and smeared all around it. This covers the bark in cantharidin and makes it so any squirrel trying to crawl into the nest would be covered and give up the attack because of the painful toxin. But with all this poison, how can the nuthatch get into its own nest? Well, it's one of the single most agile birds on the planet and can avoid the poisoned areas, especially with its incredible ability to walk upside down trees, something no other bird can do. Nuthatches can break gravity and do this by having an incredibly long hind claw that keeps them balanced as they scale down trees headfirst in search of prey or to get into their nest. And with these incredible abilities, they're able to take care of their chicks without worrying about the same threats that other birds do. All right, what an awesome animal with one of the most creative defenses I've ever heard of. And it's something not a lot of people have heard of, so I hope I could teach you guys something new. If you guys want to see more awesome bird content like this, I'm coming out with all my Costa Rica videos showcasing some of the most amazing birds in the entire world. So if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you all so much for watching. To learn more about the skin-burning poison this bird uses, check out my video on the blister beetle, where I talk about how it was historically used as a love potion.